All right, welcome in everybody. It is Wednesday morning. It's a little bit of a different atmosphere. Daniel is not here, but that's because our guest, he's playing baseball every night. So we got to catch him when he's available. Merrick Houston, how you doing tonight? Doing good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I mean, it was a pleasure for sure. So yeah, I still said tonight. I like I'm not even used to it, but I mean I'm I'm with it. Like, let's go. Um, I gotta talk to you right out the gate. The uh MLB draft, you know, your teammates, three go in the top ten, dude. How cool is that? Like to see your boys, you know, going off the board, not just in general, but that early. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome for them. It's cool to see, I mean, knowing them from this whole year from beginning to end. Um, I mean, you get to see how well they progress and how good of a player they really are and how good of a person they are. And all three of them, I mean, I think they went right wherever they, they were supposed to. I mean, Kurtz, he's my roommate. He's a great dude. Um, Love to see him go. I mean, top five. I mean, he deserves that completely. Burns, he's just, he's just that guy. He's he's really good, and I mean, he deserves two. And um, it's gonna be awesome seeing those guys in the future for sure. Yeah, no, with the the Kurtz pick, it's kind of funny, right? Because before the season, he got hurt, and I think somehow a guy like that fell off people's radar. He was projected to go number one before the season started. And so when he gets picked fourth, there's some people that are surprised. And it's like, man, y'all forgot who this dude is. Like, this is a professional hitter. This is a guy that Brock Wilkin came on here and said was better than him. And for a guy like Brock to say a statement like that. And so, yeah. And then Chase Burns was a guy everybody knew. And then Seaver, man, um, you know, guy coming from Wingate, going to Wake, you know, making a better name for himself. It's just really cool to see. And then I think um, the guy that's going to be the steal of the draft to get Michael Massey at 114, um, that dude, you know it, his stuff's electric. So, yeah, just really cool to see all your boys. I can't wait to see um, what they do in the future. It's kind of – it was fun. I know you saw that clip the other day of Brock Wilkin taking Rhett Louder, um to the yeah. moon. <laughs> yeah, that's cool to see for sure. Yeah, I'm sure they had some laughs, but you know, uh, let's uh, one more icebreaker just because I got to know. Everybody wants to know, uh, you know, what your favorite music is. If you uh, could pick anything to put on in the car right now to vibe to, what is it? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Um, I, I I like I like a little bit of both country and rap. It kind of depends on like I guess the vibe, what I'm kind of doing. Like, I mean, I was at the beach yesterday, had an off day. I was listening to some country. And then uh, I always listen to uh, some rap to on the way to the field, get me hype. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not the biggest country guy. My my daughter, she's 18. She had Morgan Wallen playing um the other day, and I'm just like, man, like change the music. But nine out of ten guys that come on here, you know, country's their thing. So I don't know. For me, I grew up in Memphis. Maybe it's that's just what it is. I'm all yeah. I'm all about the rap music. Uh. I lied. I got one more. I got to know. What's your favorite baseball movie? Ooh, uh, I would say The Sandlot, probably because I've seen it probably about 50 times. It's the right answer. We did a we did a sports movie draft, and it was my first pick off the board. Yeah. And everybody, you know, said I made the right pick. So I, th I think it's the I right see. one. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into your story. For those who don't know, where are you from? Yeah, so – um. Uh, that's a tough question for me because I grew up all over the place. My dad was in the military. Um, so I've moved all over the place. Um, but when people ask me that, I say Florida, I'd say that because I, I call that home. That's what I most recently know. That's where my parents are right now. So, um, I spent my whole high school career there. So all my friends are there and, uh, yeah. Originally from Florida. So. so obviously being in the military, I'm familiar with obviously changing duty stations, you know, every so often. And with you being a kid, luckily, you know, I didn't have to to move kids around. I didn't have them when I was in. But for you, especially being in sports, how hard is it, you know, if you're settled in and cemented somewhere and then you got to move and change every day? Yeah, it's definitely tough for sure. It's uh, it's a lot of changing parts and um just not just the sports aspect but like school and all that I think it's hard to make friends but I think sports is what uh really helped me with that uh, making friends and I remember moving right before my freshman year of high school I started playing football all over the summer and that's where I got all my friends that year and then um baseball took it to another level and I mean your teammates are just your I mean built-in best friends so you connect with those guys playing every single day and um yeah 
Yeah, it don't hurt when you can, you know, sports in general, you'll make friends, like you said, but it don't hurt when you're good. Like you, you kind of, you come in, it's the new kid can swing it. Like, <laughs> like you, you make instant friends that way for sure. But before we get too far into high school, got to talk, man. Um, you got a big family, got three siblings. Talk to me about it. Yeah. So I got two younger brothers, older sister, um, older sister just graduated from Georgia and she's doing her thing in Tampa. And then I got my younger brother, Eli, who's, uh, he just graduated high school. So he's going to be playing baseball at Georgian court, uh, next year. He's a right-handed pitcher. He's pretty good. He's got some good off speed. And then I got, um, younger brother, Graham, Graham Houston, I'll probably be hearing his name in a, in a little, in a couple of years. He's a, he's a good little player. Um, he's, Coming through the same high school I did, and I mean, he's getting all kinds of looks already. So he's a no stud. So for you growing up, how important was it for you, um, and your sister for that matter, to you know kind of set the example for your younger brothers? Yeah. So I, I kind of growing up and all that, even still now, I think one of the most important things to me is um, like my what my brothers see in me, and like trying to set that example, and like. I just want them to look up at me and say, Hey, this is my brother. And just like, I'm really proud of him. I want to be like him one day and um, hopefully they can do that and even more. And I just want to set that example. And I don't want to, I just want to teach them maybe like the rights and wrongs, like learn from my mistakes and see what they can do better and see them succeed. I think that's very important to me. And I would I mean, love for that for, to happen. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of the guests that we have on here, guys, girls, doesn't matter what the sport, a lot of them are the younger siblings and they talk about how important that older sibling was. So that's good that you're doing that, understanding what your role is for you, though. Who was the biggest influence for you growing up? I would say, I mean, I would say both my parents. Um, I've also had some coaches along the way. I think growing up is definitely my dad. I mean, I think I remember growing up, I wanted to play like army football, just like um, my dad did and play baseball and football like one day, like he did. So, I mean, I, I think that set it from an early age and that's what I, that's where I set my goals when I was that young. And I think um, it just went from there. I just kind of, yeah, just saw what he did and I wanted to be like, I wanted to be in the army and stuff like that. And I know it changed when I grew a little bit older, but I mean, he set that standard for me. So. Yeah, no doubt. So you talked about setting up in Florida. Um, what high school was it you went to? Venice High School. All right. So there, you know, you talked about it. You played football. You played baseball. Um, you were ranked the second best shortstop uh, out of Florida by a perfect game. Um, but, you know, as a football player, I like when we got guys who played football on here, too. So I got to go there first. You know, what position did you play? Yeah, so I started off kind of receiver. And I played that for my first two years. Um, and then – when baseball started getting pretty serious, I started, um, I was a, I was a punter. My dad punted in college. Um, so he, he taught me some, um, in high school. So I got pretty good at it. And then, uh, I just did that my last two years along with playing baseball. So. I got a fun fact for you that most people don't know. Um, he's a two-time guest of the show, but he grew up down the street. Austin Riley was the punter on our high school football team while he was playing baseball, and he was offered to punt at Mississippi State just like his dad. So you kind of got a thing with with him going, both y'all baseball players, but you can punt it too. Had a dad who who did the game, so cool yeah. little nugget for you. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, football, it's kind of funny. You say receiver. I, pl I played receiver as well. I couldn't get big in high school. People see me now, and they're like, oh, would you play linebacker? I was like, I didn't hit my growth spurt until I was like 20 in the military. I, I kid you not, I couldn't get bigger than like 160 pounds. Um, so for you, I've, I've seen your size is, is it obviously you're fast too. So is it one of those things you were just ready made for a receiver position? Yeah, I think, I think I wanted to play quarterback. Uh, I think freshman year, um, I definitely had the, I, I think I definitely had the arm to do it. There was this kid, I think it was my first year playing football, but this kid was like six, two already at that age. And he was slinging that thing. So I was <laughs> receiver. So he ended up throwing it to me. So. So, obviously, baseball was where your talent was. I saw that you had won a state championship there. You obviously won travel ball championships. So, you know, I got to know the success is building up early. At what point do you start getting recruited? Yeah, so uh, I would say I got started getting recruited my sophomore year in high school. I think, uh, 
yeah, I started getting looked at by Army. My cousin played there. My dad played there. So we kind of had connections there. And then it kind of just grew from there. Um, it started off with a little, uh, some smaller schools. But by my junior year, I think I got um, – started – Playing, I had a really good high school season and I had a really good uh, summer ball season. So then I started to get some looks. And uh, yeah, I thought Wake was the place to go. And that's just went from there. So, well, one of the things you mentioned, you talked about not just athletics, you talked about academics. You obviously see it later on in your time at Wake is um, making an academic team. You know, does that play a role when you pick somewhere like Wake? Because, you know, I mentioned Michael Massey earlier and we joked about it. Um, you know, when he was there talking about we actually have to go to class at our school, um, whereas, you know, the, the rumor is some don't at others. But, you know, if you go to Wake, you have to know you're going to take the academics seriously. So was that something that was the reason why you picked there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, my well, my parents went to West Point. So I think one of their goals for me was to go to a good um, academic school. And I knew that was important to them. So I definitely took that into account. And um yeah, I mean, Wake checked all the boxes, um, good baseball, good academics. And then, yeah, I mean, we do have to go to class. So, <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. So, obviously, you get to Winston-Salem um, as a freshman, dude, wasting no time playing 65 games. I got to know, though, like coming from high school, even if you're playing a lot of travel ball, we talk to guys all the time and – they talk about the the mental and physical preparation for college and just how much different it really is. So were you mentally and physically prepared for a 65 game season at the gate? Um, I kind of, I mean, I think at that time I didn't really think about that. I wasn't like, wow, I got to play this many games. It was just kind of took it day by day. It just kept playing and um, it all added up. I mean, I remember I de it definitely took a toll on me, and I know uh, Coach Walter, I remember him talking about how not very many freshmen can make it through, like, a 60-game season, so he had to, uh, like, give me some breaks and stuff like that, and I remember there were times I was hurting um, and stuff like that, but, I mean, in the end, I think I think I was good enough and ready to play even, like, a couple more games, so... Yeah, no doubt. And I mean, you know, you weren't hurting when you hit a grand slam in Super Regionals against Alabama. Um, you know, I, it feels like just yesterday I was watching that on TV where y'all just, I mean, y'all took them to uh, the woodshed. Uh, no, no other way to describe it. But what was it like for you hitting a grand slam? And not only that, um, obviously, as a freshman, y'all punching your ticket to Omaha. Yeah, I mean, being a freshman, I didn't really know too much what to expect. And it kind of seemed like well, from Wake Forest history, it's uh, we always they always got stopped in like the regionals and didn't make the supers the years before. And for me, it was kind of my first step. And I mean, we were out there crushing everyone. So I mean, it kind of made me feel like that's just like the expectation um, for the next years. And uh, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better first year. I mean, looking at those guys that I played with, those guys are gonna be some of them are going to be um, all-stars um, and just saying that I played with them one day is going to be really cool. So per perfect segue because I was texting with Brock Wilkin last night, you know, you made the comment just saying, you know, you could have played a couple more games when you watch Paul Skeens last night and he's dominating guys in the all-star game. Does it, does it ease the, for Brock, he says it does, does it ease the pain a little bit knowing that that's the guy you lost to? Uh, I, I mean, I think it definitely does. Um, I mean, the guys in the MLB in the, starting in the All-Star game, and he was – I mean, I faced him last year. So, I mean – I mean, y'all just... had, had the team – as an LSU fan, I was – I had followed Wake all year. I had went there and watched you guys, um, you know, travel out there. And I was genuinely scared of playing y'all. And when y'all won that first initial game and we were going to have to win a best of two or three – um, you know, even with having schemes, the fact that y'all had red out there, I just, I didn't feel confident and, uh, man, that was the championship game. Like that was, I said that this year, I said the Texas A&M, uh, Tennessee was the first time in the four years that I've been to Omaha that the best two teams met because I said the previous year, I said, if for anybody who was there, they know the Wake LSU was the championship and there's no doubt in my mind, if y'all advance that, that y'all beat, Florida, um, it was just, man, two Titans. And when you look at that pitching matchup, um, it, it was elite. Like you said, those are guys that are going to be playing for a long, long time. But, you yeah. know, 
it changes into this season, right? Like last year, y'all crept up on everybody. And then this year, the target is on your back. You start the season number one. Is there any added pressure, not even specifically for you, but for the team when you go from the hunter to the hunted? Yeah. Yeah, I – yeah, there's definitely a little bit of added pressure. We try – I mean, in the beginning of the year, we always, we talked about it many times, uh, saying, like, I mean, this is not – this is, like, where we wanted to be all along, and um, we're going to have a target on our back, and we just got to play – play our game of baseball, not worry about anything like that. And um, so, I mean, we, we definitely had those talks and stuff like that. And I mean, I, I want to say that that's not why we ha struggled a little bit that, that year, but um, I think um, it probably contributed to some guys, but um, there's a lot that went into it. So Yeah, no doubt. And I'm not even going to unpack all that the how the season ended uh, I definitely think y'all are a team that came up short there's no doubt y'all had all the talent in the world I'm going to just focus on um you know individually you know third team all ACC selection appeared in 54 games um led the team with a 326 batting average recorded 72 hits 39 RBIs eight home runs um tremendous jump right like you batted 222 the year before I think if I remember seeing it right so literally yeah. a hundred point jump um, you know, how good did it feel to have that success? And is it something that just came with experience? Um, I think, I think a little bit of experience and a little bit of hard work. I mean, I remember going into summer ball next, uh, the, after, after Omaha and saying, this is my time. This is how, this is where I get better. This is where I'm, I'm going to, um, make a difference for next year. And I, I really took that to heart and, and, kept working I worked on my swing kind of that was my chance to see what we didn't like and what we wanted to change and we um fixed some of those points and when we came back in the fall we noticed some big changes I started swinging it with some um intent behind it and I think that's what our main goal was and uh I mean yeah it ended up carrying to I mean the rest of the season so I was, I mean, I was happy and that's where, that's what I needed. I, I, I said, I need a good year this year and I need to hit the ball more. So I think, I mean, I met my goals there. Um, yeah, but yeah. No doubt. And I mean, I'm, I remember cause I came out there for the Clemson series, uh, drove out there and, uh, met with a couple of guys that I know and they were talking about you and I like kids, the truth. Um, and so, you know, like you said, the the when you have the batting average, right? Consistency is the thing that'll always stick out. And when a guy like you, when you're when you're at the top of the order, batting consistently, getting on base, that's the things that you want from a guy um in your position. So um definitely a nice jump. It worked out extremely well. And ultimately, you know, the way you played this year gets you the invite to um USA baseball camp and carry. Um, you know, you talk about your parents, you talk about, you know, representing the military for you. Just how awesome was it to get to wear the red, white, and blue? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I couldn't, I can't say it enough. Uh, I mean, I grew up watching USA baseball, and I said I, I didn't think I could, uh, I would be wearing that jersey one day, and to be able to have that opportunity, it was awesome. I had to take that chance for sure, and um, I mean, I had a blast, and I think I just really proud to represent our country, and like, it felt like my parents a little bit too. So, I mean, it felt really good. Yeah. So. You go from Wake to then you go to play in USA and, oh, we're going to go to the Cape too, the best summer league. Um, you're playing for the Bourne Braves. You know, we talked about it before the the show, but, like, I mean, do you get tired? Like, I know you don't get tired of the game of baseball, but I'm talking about physically. I mean, you're playing this game year-round, no days off. Yeah, you definitely get a little bit tired, but I think that's – I mean, that's part of it. You learn learn to, like, learn to – um find ways to get rid of that I mean there's certain techniques like I like to stretch I like to I mean work out and I think all that helps um with that and then um I mean there's a lot that goes into it but um yeah I mean I like playing baseball so any opportunity I can get I will I mean I'll take so yeah and you're in the right spot you know they showed the numbers this year. Record number of guys from the Cape were drafted. You know, if you watch the ACC and the SEC specifically all year, you're going to see the dudes that are playing in the Cape. Um, and like you talked about, that's where you get better during the summer um, to to correct some things that maybe you needed to fix from the, the season. So um, all the dudes in the Cape, I just expect big things from coming into this season. But I got to ask you, you know, 
I'm not getting there, getting to see everything. Um, what's been like, I don't know, give me your favorite game um, that you've had so far, not even maybe specifically you individually, but just as your team for Bourne. Uh, yeah, I would say my favorite game, I think it was one of the first couple I was there. Um, I think it was again, it might have been against Chatham. I think, uh, I think we started off the first game of the year. I didn't play. I just got there the day before we got a big win. I think we went on a couple game losing streak. And then, um, I think that game we, I think that game we won, um, so it felt good to get back in the wing column. But, um, yeah, for some reason, it brings me back to those first couple games for me. Um, just kind of re really experiencing what the Cape's like and the environment and, like, getting used to it. Um, yeah. Well, there's a lot to what you said, right? You end the season with Wake on a loss, right? So coming back, getting that win, getting back in the wing column, it's just a, it's a whole different mentality, and it's a place you want to find yourself. So – um, makes sense. But speaking of game, um, you know, you're going from one hot seat to the other. We're going to play the game called This or That that we play with everybody. You down to play? Yeah, for sure. All right, This or That is brought to you by Chinook Cedary. Eight flavors, mild to wild, the best in the game. Um, I'm going to give you two options. You choose one or the other. Can't say both. Can't say neither. Out the gate. Cereal, no milk, or peanut butter, no jelly? Cereal, no milk. You're the first one to say that, and I'm the same one, man. I don't like just uh, eating peanut butter, uh, no jelly. I can I can do cereal. Just I'm not gonna put water on it like some people do. But <laughs> yeah. uh, would you rather grill out with friends or go out to eat? I would say I would say grill out with friends. I think that's more meaningful. That, that tells me I do that question on purpose. That means you're a social person. Um, means you can hang out with just your friends, chill. Um, you don't need a lot to go on to make a to make a night happen. So I like that. Uh, would you rather have a fast car or a luxury car? Ooh, I would say I would probably say luxury, just because I don't drive fast normally. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, there's a, here's the question. I got a few of these questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna force you to pick right. better bombs: Nick Kurtz or Brock Wilkins. I want to say Nick Kurtz. Yeah, and if he doesn't get hurt, it's interesting because, like I said, Brock came on here and said, not even just he was better, he said he was the better home run hitter. Like, And he was like, kid's going to break my home run record, and then he gets hurt and obviously doesn't, which if I'm Brock, I want to hold that record. I ain't going to lie. So I don't care if we are boys. So it worked out. But, yeah, the two of them, and when he came back and he had that three home run game, I was like, okay, yeah, here we yeah. go. Um, who's got more swag, Tommy Hawk or Seaver King? <laughs> I, I, uh, like swag, like they play or like just what they oh, the wear. They, yeah, the way they play, they they both gotta always be fresh out there while they're playing. So I'll say, uh, uh, Seaver. I'd say Seaver. And Tommy is gonna cut you, bro. I put. I said <laughs> he's gonna find you. I know. Crazy. I just feel like he's a he's like a old school, just like. Just like grinder. No, I said that. I said that basically. You know, Seaver definitely has more thing, but I uh, I noticed the first time I went out there, and then we talked to him about it when he came on the show. Tommy does have the cleat game though, and he, oh, he, he does. Those Jordans, the black and gold Jordans, the first time I was out there. So that was the thing. But yeah, uh, I would say Seaver myself. Would you rather be trapped in a cave with a bear or a swamp with an alligator? Bear. <laughs> no hesitation. Yeah, I don't like. Well, they got a lot of alligators in Florida, so. No doubt. Um, who was harder to face in the fall, you know, obviously two different seasons, but Burns or Louder? I, I say Burns just because, I mean, it's hard to catch up to that fastball. No doubt. All right, last one, the money question. Would you rather be the first pick in the draft next year of the MLB, get a $10 million signing bonus, or would you rather win a national championship with Wake Forest? Yeah, I, I I would say national championship for sure. Why are you gonna come on here and lie, Mary? Just like everybody else, man. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I used to I used to think that folks were lying until Skeens came on here for a second episode after he had been drafted, and said he would give the money and the pick back and would never give back his championship. And I was like, I just had a dude that did both and actually told me that like the scenario was real for the first time. And I was like, 
and I believed him. Like he wasn't lying. And so I was like, any of these guys who come in here and say that, I like, I believe it because it's not the hardware, right? It's the blood, sweat, and tears with your boys from a whole season yeah. with memories that just can't be replaced. Yeah. I mean, you know it. You were knocking on the doorstep of it, you know, last year. And I'm pretty sure there's no way you'd give that championship up for anything if you'd have got it. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Well, you're off the hot seat. Man. Is there anything you want to plug or, or promote before you get out of here? <laughs> I don't think so. I think, I mean, not really. Where uh, can they find you on social media? Uh, you can always follow me on Instagram, uh, Mary Houston underscore five. I mean, yeah, I'll, I, I'll be on Instagram. So. All right. And then y'all can check out wake baseball on Instagram too. They are elite. Um, the videos they make, uh, their creative team is getting it done. Check out what they got going on year round. Obviously, follow the Cape on Instagram and Twitter. You can see what the Born Braves are doing. But, Merrick, man, I appreciate you taking time out this morning to tell your story. Yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. That's Merrick Houston, everybody. If you like hearing his story or you just like hearing Average Joe's talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook. Retweet us on Twitter. Listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, ratings, comments, hugs, love, feedback, all that good stuff is welcome. We'll be back next week. We're going to have Daniel back, and we'll be talking to Coach Bobby Miranda, who's got over 30 years in the ACC, and we're going to get his story, and we're going to talk all things college baseball with him. But remember, in the meantime, strong bodies, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.